Welcome to The Thriving Christian Artist, the podcast where we hope you connect with God to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live as an artist in His kingdom. I'm Matt Tommy, your host. Let's get started. Well, hey, everybody, it's Matt Tommy, and I'm so glad that you're with me today. I'm so excited to have my friend Aaron Brown all the way from California here on the podcast with us today. Aaron, thanks so much for being on, man. Hey, Matt, thank you so much. It's an honor to be with you here talking. Absolutely. You know, we have gotten to know each other over the last few years on Facebook and the the interweb, as they say, and then, um, (laughs) and then, we just so enjoyed having you come out for gathering of artisans last year. I thought it was definitely worth another conversation just to bring people uh, up to speed on who you are and what you're doing. Cause as I told you before, I really just believe that, that you're not an echo. You're just such a voice in what God's doing in the earth and in the creative realm, not just in your uh, visual art, but in music. And so just excited to know you and um, just give a little, get a little bit of wind on your fire today. So <laughs> I'm feeling it, man. It's so encouraging. Yeah. It's, it's been a passion of mine to try to cultivate and craft my own unique voice. Cause it is a temptation to just be a part of that echo chamber of yeah. culture. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for those who don't know you, um, you know, you're an incredible mixed media artist, but you're also, uh, you know, a songwriter, dare I say poet, because I think you are, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just incredible musician, and then dad, husband, just all of this rolled into one. Um, I, you know, it's kind of like, where do you start? But why don't we start with your art journey and yeah. um, talk a little bit about that? You know, where did where did all this start for you? Did you grow up in a creative house? Was it has it always been a part of your life? And, and was it ever separated, uh, like visual art, musician or has it always been together like it is now my dad was an artist see my dad passed away when i was three years old so like any good son does tries to get to know their father i went after Mm. a lot of his sketches and paintings and writings that he did and i heard about all of his music journeys so i listened to some of his music i inherited his uh vinyl albums and (laughs) i just listened to him and spent time with him through that way you know that's how i got to know my father through his his creativity so cultivating that in my early years really helped me connect with my father in that grieving place but then it also got me in a place in my teen years where that kind of burnt me out because you you realize you don't have a father and that's frustrating so you start pulling affirmation from all your peers so you make music Mm. for people around you you just go ahead and you know I made stuff at in high school visual art for like the campus logos for skate shops and stuff so and then I got burnt out from that then later on to grow up in my 20s and and realize uh, actually it was in my when I was about 15 I had a, a encounter with God that just wrecked my life and made me realize that not only did my mom see me struggling in, in this this place of, of having no father and even my friends you know that they, they were there um to try to validate me and they knew I was struggling in life and it made me feel good in a way but more than all those eyes looking up on me I saw God's eyes I had a vision of God's wow. eyes looking over the circle of the earth and the black expanse of the void of the earth and his eyes were looking on me and they looked like the sun and I realized wow. man God sees me he sees uniquely <laughs> me and I was like whoa this is a trip man and I found out later that that was my father that God was my father. Wow. He was always called the father and Jesus came to bring the father. And I had such a power encounters one after another of, of the father's heart in my life. It felt like, you know, just healing me and restoring me back to his original intention. And, and now I create out of that place um, of knowing God as my father and every piece is, is an expression of the journey that I've walked with him on that, that journey. Well, and I just see that, you know, being friends with you on Facebook and everything, I see your heart for that, not only in your artwork, obviously, but also in your physical family, because you've got three beautiful kids and you just love the heck out of them and your wife. And how does that play into your creative process? Because obviously you can't, as a dad, you can't separate that. Yeah, my wife has been a huge inspiration in my life and she's actually been a huge um, instrument. I never thought I'd be a painter. 
And uh, mm. but it's it's crazy the people that you place yourself around in that that believe in you and draw out the beauty inside of you that you never even thought you'd have. Um, I told myself I would never paint, and she just one year, lo and behold, she just showed up with all these paints and <laughs> paintbrushes, and I was like, oh man, you know, because I love her, I'm gonna operate in this realm, <laughs> not because I necessarily want to, <laughs> but yeah, I started absolutely. doing. It. And my love for her drew me to a place of cultivating a gift that, you know, was so life transforming for me and for other people around me that, and I, I, I think uh, creativity is born out of, out of love and out of relationship. And I, at least in my process, it has been, um, it's been born out of, you know, honoring those around me and, and, and using my gifts to the fullest measure, not holding back my gifts and trying to cultivate them and use them. And then a lot of the revelations that I get in the paintings from my father are all through, through my kids on the daily basis. Uh, Whether it's what they're struggling with, with my youngest son, he has autism, he has a traumatic brain injury, he has um, a mid spatial gap in his eyes. So uh, it's me coping with his, the struggles that he's struggling with, but also inspired mm-hmm. from the playfulness and the joy that he has and the interplay that I have with him as a father and a son. So I've written songs yeah. about him. I've, ri- I've painted paintings about him and about my daughter and my other son. So it's just, it, I feel like, um, I think it was John Mark McMillan over at uh, that, that last conference we went, I got to see you at yeah. there with the breath and the clay. He said, um, art is fellowship. I just love that, man. It, it's so true in my experience. It's how I fellowship with my, my family. Mm-hmm. I'm just under That's the impression good. that God's not boring. He's actually a lot of fun. <laughs> and that he, I love it. He actually likes to be in the middle of our fellowship. And I think art really um, pulls the truest. Um, expression of true fellowship to a whole nother level that's that's how it's been for me anyways that's so good I think it's that authenticity that you live out of that really is part of what fuels probably what fuels uh, such a unique creative expression of, of what you do artistically not only in your painting and in music and I know for so many artists that really is their big struggle is gosh, in a, in a world and in a marketplace of everybody painting or doing whatever it is that they do, you know, um, obviously I'm doing sculpture, other people in clay or jewelry or whatever it is, they, they struggle with this idea to really come to terms with who they are uniquely and um, talk a little bit about that process because it seems to be something that is coming, as you said, very naturally to you. Uh, and something that's very integrated into how you live life. But um, are there some other practical things that you're doing on a, on a regular basis to, to really dig into that development of a unique voice? Yeah. You know, honestly, it hasn't come completely natural. I mean, there's the, like for singing, for example, there is some natural things to happen. Like, cause I write songs and sing music. So I, I don't say it sound like Matt Tommy, for example, Oh, uh, when right. I'm paying, or I don't sound like Chris Tomlin, and so I, I just have kind of my, my voice, and so that you're born with, you know, you don't, and, and then, then there's like you get the influences of other musicians, other sounds that you've heard growing up when you're a little kid, into the different sounds that you you grow up and listen to, and they kind of shape what you like. I, I don't sing out of what I don't enjoy. <laughs> a lot mm. of people want to sound like a voice that is out there because it's popular or it's on top 40 or they want, they, they think that then they'll be validated if they sing a certain way. But yeah. I sing from a place of what I enjoy. I actually try to sing what I want to hear in the world that's missing and mm. uh, not what somebody else wants to hear that's missing, but uniquely who I am as a human what's missing on the earth, what I see is, is actually missing and then become that because not everybody's going to see what I see and what the spirit is showing me. And uh, to me, I I see a fatherless generation. And so I feel like the the earth needs more fathers singing and and over them. And so Mm. when I write my songs, I just wrote a whole album called the father's house. And I, 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 the, all the songs are as if I'm singing as a father over people or as if I'm singing as a son over people. And, uh, 
and 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 I feel that's what's been missing in my experience. So I, I think the same is true for creative visual art. Um, I, I feel like I don't need to sing something that has already been sung because it's already been sung and it's already out there. I, mm. I'm, I'm asking God, where's your heart um, in, in the visual realm and what is missing? And, uh, and, and in my opinion, I, I, I feel like I, I miss a lot of storytelling in, in the visual arts, especially in the Christian realm. And I feel like a good artist is a storyteller. So in my experience, I try to tell stories with symbolic imagery. So, um, and, and I, I don't always explain them because I love the opportunity for the viewer to, to wonder and be in an amazement and to ask them questions themselves and to actually start working those muscles because I find that the viewer actually interprets the art and almost finishes the art off. So it can actually say something to do all different kinds of people. So I'm not all, I, I don't find myself micromanaging everything that what my work means to people, but um, it, because that way it, it can create a fuller expression to so many more people. So I let it, I let myself be who I am and then I let the viewer be who they are. And I find that through that process, I find my uniquest voice, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Talk about how you came to this whole um, animal thing that you do because I love you know I have one of these pieces at my home which I'm proud to have and um but you did this whole series and I don't know if it's something that you're still con continuing but you know with people on the or it looks like kids sometimes on the back of of animals and what was that all about how did you even come to that because that's something that's been very uniquely you and uh I just love it yeah you know um sometimes um uh... I just have to let the father uh, um, say over me, Aaron, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. It sounds like putting something on God that's not something that, but I believe he, he really does. Um, he, he makes us so unique on purpose. So like if you're infatuated with unicorns, maybe it's not just because the culture loves unicorns right now, but maybe it is, but maybe there's a reason why beyond that right. culture element that you just really loved unicorns or, or Tyrannosaurus Rex. I mean, when I was a little boy, I loved T-Rex toys, you know, and you know, they're, they're maybe not as popular as they were. Um, they've hit their ups and downs on the popularity <laughs> scales. Um, but I still truly love a T-Rex. It just makes me feel like when I see one or a rendering of one, I feel like a little kid again. And so um, I love that about the process of creating um, symbolic images or, or, or just imagery itself. It takes you back to nostalgic moments or nostalgic thoughts. And so um, one year um, I heard the Lord say, cause I was getting in this artist block thing over and over again. And I felt him say, Aaron, you, you're, you, you're, you're not gonna get out of this unless you do something new. And if you stretch mm -hmm. yourself, let's do something new. So I, I took this challenge uh, of, um, starting what I call a messy journal. And so I take, I took this journal, instead of um, trying to make all my renderings perfect um, right away in my journals or go straight into painting with all the images and the thoughts that were coming to my mind at the time, I took a, a journal, I wrote on the front, real big letters, messy journal. <laughs> so that way <laughs> it could remind me to make a mess. And so I just made, I started drawing spontaneously, just animals. I, I, I was like, I didn't even realize I was doing, I just, every day I was like, oh, that's so funny. I went back through my journal of all the messy things I was doing. I was like, oh, there's animals in all these. And, <laughs> and then I, I realized, oh, wait, the past three of them in this last few days, there's been kids writing on the backs of the animals. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so profound. And I started thinking, what would that mean? What does that mean? And I allow just like I try to do for others, allow them to take the opportunity to find what those pieces mean. I was doing that for myself. I was saying, what does this mean? Why am I doing this? It was kind of an intuitive thing. I just like, it felt good to, to draw a little kid. And like, and I realized I'm that little kid. And I realized, oh, this animal means something like, mm. like uh, this, this Tyrannosaurus Rex that I'm riding and uh, my little inner child is riding on it. And I realized, okay, what does that mean? Uh, it means like he's strong, he's powerful he's the king you know like he's he's established with strength more than any other of the dinosaurs in the dinosaur kingdom and 
I was a part of that kingdom. And then I started applying that to spiritual context, like, oh, I'm strong. And, yeah. you know, when I come into a room and everybody knows it, up until that point, I've been doing a lot of serious oak tree paintings and a lot of light rays and just really serious stuff. And it was hard because I was like, God, you know, what if I'm, I'm not going to make money as much ma making little kids riding on animals. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and, but it, I knew that if I didn't do it, I was going to lose something in my soul. And I was going to lose something uh, in that inner child that, that God wanted to stir up. And since then, I've been back to painting oak trees with a whole new vigor, a whole new inspiration. Wow. Um, because I was willing to go to that messy journal and out of that messy journal, it came a children's book, which I just released and it's called, um, it's called writing and it's a series of, of creatures and with children writing on the backs of them. And each page gives a description of those animals and what it, and so basically it's a book of declarations of who we are in Christ, but mirroring that to the symbolic imagery of an animal. And so when a kid picks up a book, they can go page after page after page declaring who they are in Christ. Talk a little bit about, I'm sitting, I'm looking at your website right now as we're talking and um, I'm struck by the color palette that you seem to be really drawn to with the turquoises and kind of creamy whites and then red um, yeah. and browns. Is that something that you are cognitively, you know, upfront in your process thinking about, or is that, just kind of happen and that's just you <laughs> well years ago i had a dream in the night and, um, i was in my old church in the dream and i turned around to the back wall of the dream and there's these beautiful paintings in abstract form and they, they they're full of gold red and blue and i was like oh wow, those are so beautiful so i went into the bible and i was like where does gold red and blue play in and i found out that those are actually the colors of of where um where the glory was, where all the priests were, like all the linens, all the, uh, there was a lot of red and gold and blue. And mm. um, where the Holy of Holies were, where the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant and all that stuff, where, uh, where all the priests would go. And I was like, oh, how interesting, gold, red, and blue. And at the time, I wasn't even, I'm self-taught, so um, you could say it's self-taught, but really i am I'm been Holy Spirit taught because in these dreams, the Lord started talking to me about the primary colors, um, red, gold, and blue. I never took a painting lesson. And I started, uh, started how I said to God, you know, I really want to express your nature and your glory. And since those primary colors, you know, obviously from those primary colors come all the colors. But uh, since those are such powerful, um, you know, almost like a trinity together, I want to express those in some form and powerful ways for my pieces. So all my pieces, they always have blue, they always have gold, and they always have red, because I really want to intentionally express the, what's in the glory realm. Now, I was just gonna say it's so beautiful because it's one of the things that we've been talking a lot about in the mentoring group is in helping people develop their unique voice is this idea of limiting your palette of you know mediums, whatever it is that you do. So if, it's, if color is your medium, then limit that, you know? It, because when you bring limitations to your work, it actually opens up all of this freedom because now you've got boundaries to kind of go in. And I was just interested from your perspective because it, you know, it seems like um, there's a, a limiting factor in your work, but at the same time, it's really developed this really strong aesthetic that's so you and so strong and not contrived at all. And that's, I just, I think you really do that well. I just didn't know, is that conscious or is it just, a, well, you know, an artistic reflex that you're, I, that you're Yeah, I think it's conscious and unconscious because I was intentionally at the beginning, but I also found the best color of red that I love, the best color of blue that I love, the best color of gold, you know, and I just kind of went with those and I've stuck true to them. And over the years, I've yeah. added some more off shades of those things and they are, I am growing and in, in the, and cultivating those colors. But yeah, you're, you're totally right. Like there, um, I, I think about um, Johnny Cash, for example, he only really knew a few chords and a few strums. And, you know, he, and I love that Johnny Cash movie with Walk the Line where the guy, you know, he's playing his song, his use, unique song comes out. And he kind of draws that out of Johnny Cash. He, it's that song where the, the preacher, or the, I mean, not the pre preacher, but the producer says, if you were lying in the gutter and you had one song to sing to the world, what would that song be? 
and um, you're telling me this cheesy mm. Christian poppy thing that you think everybody will like is that the last song you'll sing while you're lying dead in the gutter and you have one song to sing to the world and it's really the believability behind the colors too and and where, where I'm placing them in context and um I I do simple because I am simple and so just like Johnny was he was <laughs> simple because he just knew simple but he also then he put his believability and his 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 honesty and his his truth and his reality is uniqueness behind that and i think that's what made johnny's music so powerful even though many songs have the same dun 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 over and over again <laughs> uh, right <laughs> if you, you just listen to his words and and it, this the uh, the cadence and and the and the the, the tone of his voice that sounds so genuine because it was genuine and you just you believed it you know and, and so that's the same thing with my visual art I think yeah. I just I'm really not trying to be anybody I'm trying to tell my own unique story you know so talk a little bit about this whole um, balance that you're in right now of being an artist musician dad and what two years ago you opened up a gallery uh, in Redlands California and um, you're there on a regular basis, creating, selling. What's that like? And um, what are some of the things that you're learning just from that whole experience? So sometimes I, I feel really discouraged and I compare myself to other people and my wife has to remind me, Aaron, you know, you're, you don't have win wisdom. You're not operating out of a spirit of wisdom when you're out of operating out of a spirit of comparison. And so she said, she always draw the yeah, un unique good. me out of me. and. She says, How, what kind of paints do you have in your suitcase right now? Because sometimes I would have no money to even buy nice, fresh paints, you know. And so it would literally come down to like a few colors and I can paint like a few blocks and I would paint that and I would sell those and then I'd get more money. And then I'd hit like a big stride of a month where I'd sell like, you know, five big paintings and then I could go buy all the colors under the sun. And because the, <laughs> the thing was, is with my painting, I was providing yeah. for three kids and a wife all off of painting you know <laughs> so sometimes you didn't know how the paint was coming yeah. or you know sometimes i would take old vintage doors and paint on those when i didn't have um, canvases and um and sometimes i had more canvases than i knew what to do with and so i'd be giving them away you know but um it was just learning to let um instead of saying i'm a victim circumstances are happening to me i'm totally helpless to be a creative person in a creative career. You say, what has God placed before me in my hands? What can I do with it today? And, and, and hold it as a treasure. Say, thank you, God, for it. You know, it's just like you do for your food. You know, <laughs> you thank God and you eat the food. If you, only if you have top ramen and you still thank God for it, you know, and you still eat it, you know, I'm not going to just throw away a career because one month things are tight. And things, you know, you just keep pressing, you yeah. keep going into it. Um, you don't throw away your top ramen just because things are hot, tight. You eat that top ramen and you hope that the next box <laughs> or the next cup is coming. I'd say just how I operated in that, I've been able to build my art gallery. Things haven't been like all roses, you know, sometimes the roses have had some serious thorns on them. And I think, uh, I think creatives sure. um, do themselves an injustice to say things aren't going to that are, are just going to be fine and things are going to be good because things are, aren't always going to be good. It's going to be hard. And um, it's how you set out in your mindset. I've just um, kind of come up through this knowledge of like, I'm going to have a lifestyle of being an artist. My whole, the rest of my life, I'm going to be an artist. This is not going to be a brief stay in creativity. This is not going to be a brief jaunt in my career. Like I'm actually going to have a full career for the rest of my life. So having a long-term vision, has helped me kind of stride into this place where I'm now owning an art gallery, running art events in, in my city, starting art events, and um, even being a minister at a church at the same time. So, and then in that place, setting boundaries, like what's more important at the end of the day? Is it how good my top ramen is to the world? Is it how good my paints are to the world? Um, it, it, no, right. I have my priority is my wife, it is my children, it is, and then uh, it, it is my own soul. You know, I can't throw lifelines to everybody else and not throw myself one. Um, I need Jesus so bad, and that is my biggest priority. And then out of that overflow comes my children, my wife, 
and how I structure my time, how I set up my schedule. That's just kind of been my process through all this stuff. And, uh, but now, uh, you know, it's been a lot of dreaming too. Not, I, I came one to one point in my life and I'd say about 2007 where I got so frustrated because I realized the things that God had given me, I had no like fruit for like all the gifts on my life, mm. all the seeds that he had planted in my journey, all the edification and encouragement, the people in my life. And I had, I was just so fat and happy, but I had no fruit uh, to give to the world from all these gifts that God gave me. The kingdom of heaven suffers violent and the violent take it by force. And I was just like, I'm going to make art where like something inside me is dead. Like there's no fruit on the tree. There's just shriveled up yeah. leaves and yeah. nothing to hand to this world. And I was like, Jesus, you died and you deserve the reward of your suffering. And I want your full measure of your reward in my life to be manifest on this earth. And I, I, I can't live another day without mm. seeing you, you know, receive the reward of your suffering for my life. And man, it, it was such a powerful thing. It shaped so much of the starting point. Aaron, thank you so much, man. It's, I know that people are going to want to connect with you and they can do that at AaronBrown.com and uh, find out about not only your incredible paintings and uh, original art, G. Clay prints, things like that, but also your music and your book and um, just really connect with you in, a, in an authentic way. Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.